Have you heard that if you want bullets in Unity, you better use Raycast? Well, that's certainly one way of implementing it, but Unity is very much capable of detecting fast moving objects as long as you configure it properly. So in today's video, I want to show you how to configure your rigid body collision detection so your projectiles are detected no matter how fast they're moving. Let's start by describing the scene here that we're going to be working with. We have a couple targets. Target number one is this game object with a box collider and no rigid body. We usually call this a static collider target. We also have hidden at the moment, but let me go ahead and enable it. We have a dynamic collider uh, target, and these are connected by character joints, and these have box colliders with rigid bodies. So these are known as dynamic collider targets. Okay, let me go ahead and turn this off because we're going to start with the static collider target. We also have a barrel. The barrel has a script attached to it. Let's go ahead and show that script really quick. It's really simple. The script has three different fields here that we expose on the editor. The first one is the bullet, the bullet speed, and the time scale. When, e when we press the mouse here, the left button, we are going to set the time scale of the game to whatever value we have in the editor. We're going to create a new instance of the bullet. Once we have that instance of the bullet, we're gonna grab the rigid body component out of the bullet and we're going to add a relative force to it so then we can move that bullet forward. And then we're gonna tell the engine, we're gonna tell Unity to, to destroy that bullet after three seconds. So really simple script. What else we have? We also have a bullet. The bullet it, the bullet has a sphere collider and it has a rigid body. And right now it's pretty much set to the default values besides the mass. I just have it really low. Only, well, only 10 grams. Like this is supposed to be one kilo. And so 0 0.01, 0 0.01 kilos. Interpolate is set to none and collision detection is set discrete. These are the default settings. N now that we understand our scene, let's go ahead and, and play it. The barrel right now has the bullet set to 35 meters per second or units per second. And when we fire the bullet, you can see it goes right through our aesthetic target. Okay, it goes right through it. The reason why it goes right through it is because the physics engine is only checking for collision every so often. Let me go ahead and change the time scale here so we can visualize that a little bit better. So instead of running at real time, we're going to change this to 0 0.025. Is that too slow? 0.25, let's try this. So let's go ahead and fire the bullet. Now you can see how often the physics engine is actually rendering that bullet and checking for collision. And it just happens that, let me go ahead and then move this a little bit here. It just happens that when the physics engine kicks in, that target is just, that bullet is not in contact with that target. So it goes right through it. So that's what that's what's happening with the discrete detection. It only tries to detect an object when the bullet is, you can think about it that way. It only tries to detect an object, a collision, when the bullet is rendered, okay? So let's go ahead and look at our first option here. The first option is interpolation, okay, interpolate. Right now it's none. So when you set to none, this is what it actually looks like in the game. Of course that we have it in, we have it slowed here. So it, it it's really choppy. Um, if we were to do this, at, run this at a regular scale, then it looks a little bit better, but still looks kind of choppy. So let me go ahead and put this back to 0.025. Okay, so now we have it it's slow again. Go to the bullet and let's look at our first option here, interpolate. When we change interpolate, and I'm gonna fire the bullet, you can see how smooth this, this looks. Now, look what happens when it gets to the target. I'm not sure if you're surprised by that or not, but the reason why it went through the target is because the physics engine is still calculating only on those steps that we saw earlier. The reason why it looks smooth right now is because it's 
it's predicting where the next render is going to happen and it's just filling in frames with i don't know what we're going to call it with with ghosts with ghost ghost bullets between those frames so it just looks better but the detection is still happening only so often okay so interpolate creates the um the ghost the ghost particles after the calculation of the position is going to be happens mm. now if you e extrapolate let me go ahead and fire the bullet when you extrapolate it's doing it ahead of time okay and there's some consequences for that um, i can show you i can show you a little bit later on but the this setting right here interpolate is for visual only for only visual okay let's go ahead and, i'm going to go ahead and set to none again so you can see those steps okay that's when the physics engine is kicking in now let's go ahead and change this to continuous okay so instead of instead of discrete we're going to do continuous so let's fire the next bullet look what's going to happen now even though it's only taking every so often every every so often the steps now because it is the collision is continuous it between those two steps it checks to see if there was any colliders between those two steps and if it detects that collider in there it puts the bullet in that location okay so that's what continuous does this is the best way to detect fast moving objects against static colliders okay so again you can fire the bullet against static colliders and this is going to work just fine now let me change here the static collider to dy dynamic collider so let me go ahead and turn this off I'm gonna turn the dynamic collider on and the setting is still the same, it's still continuous. Let's fire. Look what happens here. It's continuous and now it's gonna go through the object again, even though we have continuous. And the reason why it's going through it is because these objects are not static colliders. These are what we call dynamic colliders because they have rigid bodies attached to them so in a situation like that what we need to do is change from continuous to dynamic so then we're going to hit a dynamic object so let's go ahead and fire when we fire the bullet now it's going to detect okay i mean i'm going to increase the mass here a little bit so we can actually see that dynamic collider actually moving okay very nice I am also going to change this to interpolate and uh, change the bear the time scale here back to one so let's go ahead and uh, turn this off and bring back our static collider and take a look at the continuous speculative the continuous speculative tries to guess where the collider is going to be so in a situation like this uh, it's hard to see here but it hits the target a little bit before it actually hits the target so let me go ahead and reduce the speed back to 0.025 and let's fire the the bullet and let's see if we can see it hitting it before it actually hits as you can see there it kind of well the slowdown happens with the other ones as well but it kind of dipped down a little bit before he hit the target and you can see kind of dips down a little bit and if we change this back to instead of speculative just back to dynamic or continuous in this case dynamic also works for uh, static colliders by the way so uh, it just it doesn't work for uh, dynamic colliders okay let me see if I can show you what happens when you set to extrapolate let me see if we can see it what 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 I'm expecting to see is that we're gonna fire a bullet it's gonna go through it oh there it is it's gonna go through it and then it's going to render back on this side. So let me go ahead and fire a few more here. See if we can make this happen. And 
goes through it. And the reason why is because when you're extrapolating where the bullet is going to be, it tries to guess before it actually calculates. So that's pretty much it. It's a, a really simple tutorial, but um, I think it's a really important to understand this interpolate and collision detection because at this point you can you can fire really fast things um, and they're still going to be picked up. So let me go ahead and actually show you um, what I mean by it. Um, let me go ahead and actually turn this off, turn this back on, and then right now we have our bullet. We have our bullet being fired at 35. Now we can change that to whatever you want. So instead of 35, it can be 1000. So fire the bullet, there it is. And keep in mind that we were, uh, the time scale here is really slow, but I'll go ahead and I'll make that really fast. But instead of 1000, we can make 5000. And it's still gonna be detected. Let me go ahead and put this in real time here so you know that I'm not cheating. But fire, fire, fire. There you go. It's hitting every time. Instead of 5,000, what about, let's do 50,000. There, it's hitting as well. Okay, let's do, what is this, 500,000, 5 million? There, it's hitting as well. So no matter how fast you fire your bullet, it's going to hit now. I hope you found this video informative. Um, if you liked it, please leave a comment, give a thumbs up on the video, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Bye.